Okay, so I haven't figured this out yet. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> See, these are the things that happen when Renee leaves me in charge of the tech. He got me a nifty little gadget for when he's out. Oh, my gosh. Here I am with the volume Hi, again. <laughs> See, these are the things that happen. Wrong button. Yeah, figured as much. It's been one of those weeks. <laughs> I Hi. How is everybody? I hope you're having a great week. Um, I sincerely hope that you're having one better than me. <laughs> Mine's been a challenge this week. Uh, today we're going to be painting uh, hot peppers. I really love this. It's a fun technique. It's super easy. It sort of brushes us up on, pardon the pun, on a few basic techniques. Uh, we're going to be doing a little floating, a little base coating, a little bit of um, dry brushing, and a few other just very basic techniques just to sort of refresh us a little bit on some of those. And in the end, we're going to create a really fun little t uh, kitchen decor piece. So we are going to be working on hot peppers today. Um, I hadn't posted during the week, to be quite honest. I wasn't sure if I was going to go live today or not. Um, I've kind of had a, a, a tough week with these. So um, one is still giving me gears. The other one is uh, a little better than it has been. So um, bear with me if I'm slow today. <laughs> so we're going to be tackling hot peppers and we're going to have a little bit of fun with that. Um, I ha did have some happy mail this week. I got uh, some stencils in and a few other fun little goodies that I'm playing with. And uh, I got some fabulous new surfaces that are on their way and a whole bunch of other fun stuff coming up for, for the next couple of weeks um, and a major sale coming up as well. And what else? Right, giveaways. Dynasty Brush, as always, has been incredibly, incredibly generous. We have three Dynasty Faux Squirrel brush sets to give away today. Along with that, we have some goodies from Tombow, uh, some t professional drawing pencils, and uh, some little giveaways from the Stencil Studio as well. And, and of course, we always throw in some fun stuff from us. So those are our giveaways for today. And uh, what else? What else? What else? Any news? We had a, a wicked um, storm here this week. A wicked storm <laughs> here this week. Um, areas south of us towards Sussex and um and down towards Moncton and whatnot uh had some terrible flooding uh, we had heavy rain and then of course it froze so now we have ice everywhere but uh, for the most part we got off very easily in our little corner of New Brunswick uh, but the Sussex area really took a lot of damage uh some of the roads washed out um heavy flooding in some low-lying areas so if you are in Sussex we're thinking about you hope everything is well Faye I hope that you and uh, and some other friends of ours in that neck of the woods are uh, are doing well and uh, just let us know that you guys are okay so hot peppers i don't know uh, if you have painted this before i have a piece called hot sauce it uses a very similar technique it does a whole bunch of different surfaces um, but what i love about this is the use of dry brushing and floating there's a combination of the two things gives us a really nice effect very distressed and just overall really fun piece to paint so that is what we're going to tackle today but before we do i want to have a look and see who all is joining us we have janet mills and marianne hughes linda gill jackie gibson hello jackie and lynn bowman and denise chavez hello my dear uh, oh my goodness, everybody's here today. Jane Schumann. <laughs> Thank you, I needed that. <laughs> and Carol Manhard. Hello, Carol. Teresa Arquette and Donna Pulse. Oh my goodness, everybody's here today. Um, I will apologize for being so late this week. It's just, it's been a challenging week. So, but I managed to get something painted. And um, I'm rather pleased with it because I had a lot of fun painting it. So if you guys are ready to get started on hot peppers, so am I. Yay, I did it without messing things up. Yeah, Renee got me a nifty little, nifty little tool called a stream deck so that I can switch the cameras all by my lonesome. And I managed to do it without creating havoc or making a mess of things. <laughs> so... Uh, don't mind the mitten. 
it's um as of right now is just keeping things where they should be <laughs> i'm gonna move my ipad so that i can see questions renee actually has a job to do right now so i'm going to move this so that i can see questions I don't know if I'll be able to see the YouTube questions or not. Okay, I'm jealous. I'm very jealous. <laughs> Darlene or Donna Putz. I got to tell you, I'm very jealous. I haven't gotten my new colors yet. I'm I'm waiting with bated breath. I'm very excited about the new colors. So um, I keep seeing people posting that they got them and I'm just, uh, I haven't got them yet. Is my hand okay? It is. It's just I have arthritis in my wrist and in my fingers. And it's just both hands have really been giving me a lot of trouble this week. And the left one is always worse than the right. So, yes, I'll be fine. A couple of days of anti-inflammatories and all will be well. So this is the piece that we're painting. Hot peppers. I love this. I just think that it's a really fun piece to paint. What is going on with this screen? <laughs> that is so weird anyway uh, this one it's a fun piece to paint it's not difficult it, it kind of takes us back to some really basic techniques so we're going to talk about those the prep for this piece is super easy it just base coat it black that's all you need to do and then you're going to apply painter's tape on the outside edge so we're going to create a border that is just the width of the tape I've always found this just the simplest method. And then we're going to stencil our background. I don't know what's going on with this screen. So strange. So the stencil that I'm using is this one. It is M square 37, which is half inch check. I use this one a lot. This is one of those stencils for me that this one gets used a lot. As you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, Renee's got me set up so I can see uh, both YouTube and um, the Facebook page, although my Facebook image is just wonky. Okay, now it went back to normal. That's a connection issue. Okay, so we're just having a... Anywho, we'll carry on. So the color palette for this one, I went with some really fun colors. I wanted something really bright and bold. And so we're going to be using a little bit of uh, matcha green and a little bit of tomato red, because I love tomato red, and matcha green. Look at that. Whoop. And then, of course, i got to have my Bahama Blue. And while I'm loading this up, I want to say hi to Mary, Linda Safranco's mom. Mary, I hope you're doing well. Oh, I'm so jealous of all you guys. <laughs> Everybody's getting their new colors and I don't have them yet. So our background is going to be done with Bahama Blue, Tomato Red, or a nice bright red. It doesn't have to be Tomato Red. It can be any red. And uh, I'm using Matcha Green. You can use Margarita. You can use any bright lime yellow green. That's all you really need. So I'm going to start with a little Bahama Blue. And I'm going to... This is the fun part. You don't have to be perfect about this. We just want to get a little bit of that blue down. Look at that. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. Now, I started with the Bahama Blue because it is the most opaque of the colors that we're using. And the, the chat window. There we go. <laughs> Renee gave me a chat window, but it doesn't, uh, 
doesn't want to stay put. It keeps closing. So I'm going to put it behind my tea mug. So I have close at hand here. Good heavens. Yep, there's six new colors this year. I'm really excited about them. Um, mainly because I was, I was fortunate enough that I had an opportunity to uh, make my contribution to those new colors. And uh, I'm very pleased with, with what eventually was selected. I just think they're pretty cool. Um, I can't wait to play with that um, that deep purpley color. I love it. I guess it's a purpley red. There we go. So I've got a little Bahama blue. Again, when I say they don't have to be perfect, I mean it. They're not perfect. We just sort of want a, a mixture. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the country red. And you're going to do this in, in small increments and the brush should be almost dry. And I'm just going to just scuff a little of that red into each square. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can start with the, with the uh, blue and end with the green or end with the red. It doesn't really matter. Um, but you should try to get a little bit into each square. And again, it doesn't matter if it's just a little bit or a lot. It doesn't matter. But we want to get a little bit in there. And it's the imperfections in this particular technique that work in our favor. Look at that. <laughs> so, so again, it looks like a dog's breakfast. I know it does. So then we're going to take that stencil brush and we're going to pick up that matcha green or margarita or whatever that bright green is that you chose. And we're going to put a little bit of that into each square. Doesn't have to, again, doesn't, don't make it perfect. It can be a little opaque. It can be not. It doesn't have to be anything perfect by any stretch of the imagination we just want to try and get a little bit of that color in each square that's all so again it's going to look like a dog's breakfast until we get to the end of this and of course some of those colors are going to look a little bit different once you have them in there and it's okay I've always loved this particular finish done with a stencil. It's sort of a controlled way of getting a little bit of controlled chaos. Let's call it that. So I just look around, see if I want a little more green. I tend to lean towards a little more green. I kind of like that. But uh, I think that's where I want it, right there. I know it looks like a, an unholy mess. But when you remove the stencil, it gives you a different look altogether. And I really like this kind of mottled soft bit and on a black background. It's very dynamic. So I'm going to line my stencil back up and we're going to repeat that until we fill the whole area. So a little bit of Bahama blue. Neatness doesn't count. I love that this doesn't have to be perfect just makes things more interesting and then a little bit of that red little bits again don't worry about being perfect doesn't have to be by any stretch of the imagination there we go nice and then a little bit of the green I kind of like having just that little punch of that yellow green, that high yellow green, it's just, it's a yummy combination. And it just makes things more interesting. 
So once you have them on, et voila. And then you just continue until you have the entire surface covered. Just like that. So line up your stencils. The only thing that's really important with this is making sure that everything is straight um, because you are working with a straight vertical edge and straight vertical squares. So those things have to be straight. But they don't have to be perfect. So super easy, a little bit of that red, blot, I've always loved this sort of mottled little punches of color in it with no real rhyme or reason as to where the color lands. That sort of randomness is always appealing. And then I'll do the same thing with the green. And this is forgiving. You can, can break a lot of rules with this. A little bit of green, a lot of green. It doesn't really matter. And in the end, it's your piece. So if you tend to lean more towards the greens and less the reds and your squares take on more green, that's all good. There is nothing wrong with that at all. You can't really do this wrong, quite honestly. And I think that's what appeals to me about this, is that it doesn't have to be perfect. And it looks better when it's not. Such a fun technique. And it's a really great background for a lot of different designs, but I particularly like it with these um, more Southwest or Tex-Mex or you know anything that involves peppers and whatnot. I just like that combination of colors. I just think that it's a fun pattern back there. It can be as in your face as you want it, or it can be as subtle as you want it. And that makes for an interesting background. So there's a little bit of blue and a little bit of red. And I like that I can put a little punch more in if I want or not. It can be subtle or it can be in your face. Um, and you can choose any tone of red you want. If you prefer something with more heat in it, uh, maybe a scarlet would look great. Or a little bit of uh, red alert would look great. You, as I said, you can't really do this wrong. So there's that bright green, which I love. I love that heat. Love it, love it, love it. Whoops. Okay, that one's going to have a lot in it, but honestly, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to remove my stencil, and I'm going to dry this really well. And, oh, and then we're going to distress this a little bit. <laughs> Poor Debbie. <laughs> Somebody reminded her to use her senior's discount. <laughs> Poor Deb Bloomfield.
So we're going to distress this a little bit and I'm going to do it so it's vertical. I want any of the lines, any of the distressing that I create in here, I want it to go vertical. And I'm going to distress it so that I expose a little bit of the black underneath. I like to sand it enough vertically that it kind of gets these little nicks and scratches in it. Just like that. And what it also does is it kind of softens the boundaries between some of those colors so that you get a nice soft worn appearance as opposed to a heavily distressed look. So I'm going to grab a little piece of shop towel and I'm going to wipe off some dust like so. So it just gives it a nice softly distressed appearance which that appeals to me. I like the softer instead of that heavy handed Yeah, this would make a great Halloween background. It's fun and it's super easy. So I'm going to put a little asphaltum on my palette. And I'm going to use a big angled shader or a big flat. It doesn't matter what. Whatever works for you. And I'm going to put a float of thin asphaltum all the way around the outside edge of this panel, just like so. And again, neatness doesn't really count for this. If you've got lots of water in your brush, it'll just make the color move a little easier. And you notice that I'm just going right over the edge of the tape. This actually serves a purpose. Now I'm going to get that nice crisp edge. I'm not going to have that you know, flat, dark area on one side or a line. So I got rid of a line. And then I'm going to thin out some of that asphaltum, really thin it out, a little bit of water or glaze. You can use the faux glaze for this too, if you want to. So I'm going to dry that. And then I'm going to put a wash of that heavily thinned asphaltum over the surface and I'm applying it vertically. Remember how we sanded it? We sanded it vertically. We're going to apply the glaze or this wash of color over top in the same fashion. And that way, if there's any brush marks created or any lines left in the surface, it's going to follow that pattern. And so it becomes part of the finish and then we don't have to work against it. So there we go. Now I'm going to dry, let that dry for a second. I'm going to grab my line drawings. I have my line drawing. Now one of the things that I like to do is I like to cut my line drawing out following the shape of the surface that I'm using. So that I can center this properly. There we go. So I have my line drawing here. I'm going to make sure this is completely dry. And then we're going to remove the tape. So I wanted to show you, and, and I discussed this before, um, is removing tape is a technique unto itself. So I've got painter's tape back here. So I'm just going to loosen my painter's tape from the back. Now, removing tape, there is a technique to removing tape. And I've seen people 
take tape off of their painted pieces and then be devastated when you see, you know, that fresh paint is damaged by removing the tape or it pulls it right off or it pulls off a portion of the finish. And that's always so frustrating. Um, but let me show you a technique that will drastically reduce the chances of that happening. And it's this simple. Um, when you're pulling back your tape, pull it back on itself. So it should be back on itself. It should almost be touching. And then pull it at a 45 degree angle, like so. And when you do that, it reduces the amount of tension that you create on all of that fresh paint. And it reduces the chance of you yanking your paint or peeling your paint off. So again, fold it back on itself, 45 degree angle, and just take your time. Don't yank it off in one go. If you do, if you pull it off too quickly, that contributes to making, um, to damaging your finish. But a lot of it is quite simply taking the time to pull it back on itself. And yes, it does take a little extra time, but so would touching it up. So I saw a great saying the other day. Yeah, if you haven't got time to do it right the first time, when are you going to have time to fix it? So 45 degree angle, pull the tape back on itself. And a couple of really neat things happen. One, you get a really nice, crisp, clean edge all the way around and you have no damage to your painted surface. Look at that. So now we have a nice finished background with which to apply our line drawings. So I'm going to position my line drawing squarely on the surface and then I'm going to tape it into place and we're going to talk about tracing and transferring our line drawings. So I'm going to tape mine at the bottom. So hot peppers. I love doing this. This is just this is just one of those color palettes that has a lot of energy um, and a lot of interest and they're just fun. They're just fun. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white graphite and I'm going to place my line, my white graphite underneath my line drawing. I'm going to make sure that my line drawing stays square to the edges of my surface. Otherwise, we'll have uh, lettering going uphill. We don't want that. I'm going to grab my ruler and my red gel pen. And this is the technique that I like to use for let when tracing lettering especially this style of lettering because it has lots of vertical lines. If you use a ruler on all of those vertical lines, you're going to end up with nice straight lettering. Nothing out of whack, nothing, you know, leaning the wrong way. But most importantly, this edges and sides of that lettering are nice and straight and true and it makes a world of difference when it comes time to paint them. You cannot paint straight lettering if your lettering is not straight. And so I love taking a ruler just to those vertical lines. It makes a world of difference in the end. And then the same at the top of the lettering those little straight lines at the bottom. There we go. So you end up with nice, crisp, clean lettering. <laughs> and 
and it just makes things a whole lot easier when it comes time to paint them. The curved limes you can freehand simply because they're going to be a lot more forgiving. But the, the straight lines are vitally important. Vertical and horizontal. And that includes these ones. Even though it's a curved letter, make sure those ones get it. That little line on the inside. There we go. And there we go. One more. It always fascinates me when you're doing lettering. Um, just how much technical thing, how much technical work actually goes into creating lettering, making sure things are properly spaced, making sure that things are straight and level is vitally important level being perhaps the most important. <laughs> it's no fun to struggle to get the lettering done when things are not lining up the way they should. Curved lines are a little more forgiving, but the straight ones must be straight. And Almost forgot the E here. Who am I missing here? Oh, there we are. So it's apparently very windy in Provo, Utah. Hi, Anne. Hi, Diane. I saw on Facebook, Diane, that you have officially retired. Congratulations. I'm very happy for you. I retired a number of years ago just so I could paint. <laughs> I call it retiring because it's not like having a quote real job. But um, I'm very happy for you, Diane. Congratulations. Okay. This ruler does not want to cooperate with me today. But I do want to. There. So I'm also going to come down here and we're going to trace our chili peppers. Now, one of the things I love about this particular style of chili pepper is that it doesn't have to be perfect. And like most of the things that don't have to be perfect, they actually look better when they're not. So I don't worry too much about whether or not they're all exactly the sh same shape or even the same size because that's not important. What is important is their placement. And in this particular case, it's going to go off slightly, just slightly outside the edge of the border, which I was aiming for. I wanted these to overlap with the border just a little. It just makes things a little more interesting and a little less structured, if you will, or heavily structured, I think is the word I was looking for. And the little vines and tendrils, I wanted them to hook on to the lettering, even if it's only in a couple of places, um, just to keep the, the fruit or vegetable or whatever you want to call these hot peppers grounded to the subject matter. So they are connected. And it was just part of the composition. And that's why I, even in the smallest way, like things to connect. So we have a lovely chili pepper.
lovely chili pepper and a fun little background. I like the fun little background. There we go. So before I take my line drawing off, I'm going to have a quick look and make sure that I have everything in place. My lettering is all nice and straight and complete. No, it is not. I missed a spot right there. And another one right there. Okay. And another one in the O. Look at that. Hence the reason I do not remove my line drawing until I have double checked everything. Just saves you a little time in the end. And I see another spot that I missed right there. And just making sure I got all the leaves. And I do. So even though these peppers are just, we're talking like a quarter of an inch overlap on either side of that. When we're finished, it'll make all the difference. So finished with the graphite paper. Peppers look good. The lettering is complete. So we'll remove the line drawing. To me, this is just a fun, fun piece to paint. And it just sort of brushes us up a little bit on the, the very basic techniques of painting. And we tend to forget them sometimes because we get so wrapped up in whatever it is we're doing that we forget that there are some basic methods to follow to get a good result. So I'm going to thin out a little bit of warm white. And you can't see that. So I'm going to move my camera here just a little so you can see. I've got a little bit of warm white on my palette. I'm going to use a little bit of my fast dry glaze to thin that out. Just a little. If you don't have fast dry glaze, you can use water. And we're going to start with base coating these peppers. Now, I fill in my peppers following the shape of the pepper. And that way, all the brush marks run in the one direction instead of every which way. It does make a difference in the end. And because we're working on a dark background, I like to put down a layer of thinned warm white or a little bit of gesso, just something to block all of that dark color. Just makes your life a little simpler. And it does not have to be fully opaque. We're just breaking up all that black. And I like the warm white because we're using some fairly bright colors. We're using a bright red and we're using a, a bright green. And so we want them to retain all of that brightness. And so that's what we're going to do. By having that little bit of warm white there, it just helps us keep those colors bright. They're not having to compete with all of that black underneath. <laughs> the best job in the world is the one that you love. And I had somebody ask me one time what I did for a living. I told them that I was uh, an artist. And the response was like, oh, but you don't have a real job. <laughs> so I, th I think what they meant was is I don't work nine to five or someplace else. But 
I thought it was rather funny. Oh, I don't have a real job. So that's how I, I usually do the fingers quotes things when I say that. Um, because it is, it's work. But it's work I love doing. So, I mean, how bad can it be when you turn your passion into your job? Yes, I I don't work at a quote real job, <laughs> but I have the best occupation in the world for me. Trying to see. It does make a huge difference, Denise, when you base coat in one direction, you're not having to work against uh, brush marks. You're not having to work against pattern. And things tend to come out much more even if you're putting them on this way. So following the shape of something, but it does. If that way, if there's any brush marks, it actually works in your favor instead of you having to work against it. Because you can pull your color just like this. So as I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't even have to be fully opaque, but because all of the brush marks are going in that one direction, I'm not having to fight against them. They are not something else I have to cover up. They fall into what I'm painting. So I have chili peppers. So I'm going to dry this real quick. And I like having this little bit of white underneath. I just, it makes such a difference to the colors that we're going to put on. And we are using a little bit of tomato red. I love this color for chili peppers. Hi, Char. I love tomato red for chili peppers. Yeah, they're ghost peppers to start. <laughs> we'll make sure everything is nice and dry. All right, Vicky. <laughs> like staying at home wasn't a full-time job. So I'm going to paint every other pepper with a coat of tomato red. And see what that little bit of white underneath does for our tomato we get that nice bright red and it stays bright red because we've got something underneath it now when i'm base coating this with the red i'm doing the same thing i'm following the shape of the surface so follow the shape of the pepper and apply your base color following the same direction that you use to put the white down. So we got a nice bright red and I'm going to do the same for every other pepper. So Renee is upstairs packaging stencils. I got a massive shipment of stencils in. We were getting low on a lot of things and I have a big stencil sale coming up. So we needed to restock in the worst way. I'm going to use a smaller brush for the little tip. There's a little tip there. I need a smaller brush to put that in. 
And I like this smaller brush for cleaning up edges so that if there's any little spots that I didn't quite get. And again, nice bright red. Love that. Now, again, these do not have to be absolutely fully opaque because we're going to put three other colors over top of this. So we don't need to kill ourselves to get absolutely opaque. Whoops, a daisy. I whoopsied. I'm going to grab my, I've got a filbert here. And I went off the edge a little bit here. I got red on everywhere else. So I'm just going to clean it up with the edge of a filbert. No need to get too excited about it. I'm going to dry this. I'm going to put one more coat on this one here. Because I had a little too much water in the paint. And it wasn't very opaque. A little too thin. And I don't generally put a lot of water in my base coat. I usually throw a little bit of glaze in it just to get it to move nicely. But this one, I had a little too much water in it and it just wasn't quite opaque enough. So there's our red peppers. And we're going to use holly green for our green peppers. Great color. Holly green is such a pretty green. It is not, however, very opaque. So we may need a second coat of this, but I want you to see what a difference painting all in one direction makes when you're base coating, especially with a color that is not very opaque, as in this holly green. So if I'm pulling all of my strokes in the same direction, like so, I get smoother coverage. Not necessarily full coverage, but smoother coverage. So that when I go to put that second coat on, it's going to go on a lot more uniform. And this is a green that is extremely transparent, so it does not cover very well. So here goes the second coat following those same strokes that I did the first base coat with, with that white. And look at how nice and uniform that base color is. So I have very few brush marks showing and I have a nice uniform finish. Not necessarily fully opaque, but uniform. And that's just because I follow it in one direction. And I'm going to do the same thing to all of these green peppers. And it also, as an added bonus, just helps you create an interesting texture for these peppers. Now, someone had asked me, uh, what if they wanted to do like a yellow pepper or uh, another shade of red, like an orangey pepper? Um, what colors would they use for that? Well, one of my favorite colors to use for to create an orangey pepper is scarlet. Because you're going to highlight it with orange anyway. So a, a nice mid-tone would be scarlet, would be an ideal color. And then if you wanted to go to a yellow, um, I would start with something like a marigold. But I kind of like the, I'm kind of liking the greens. 
myself. But a marigold would be a nice one. And then you could shade with, you know, ochres and highlight with some of your brighter yellows. Oh, schmegly in there. I had a little ugly thing in there. There we are. I got a little spot here that's bugging me. There it is. And then I'm going to switch to that smaller brush for this a little bit here. And I'll dry this before I put that second coat on that one. Peppers, peppers, peppers. So if you are looking for the uh, seahorse surfaces, we do have them in and we've put them all on sale. And the surface for this one is on as well. So we've put a lot of our surfaces on sale. And I needed to make I need to make some room because I got some beautiful new ones coming in. I have a beautiful eight by eight postage stamp coming that I think you're going to love because I'm going, I've got something really pretty for that. And what else have I got? Oh, and I've got a new bumblebee project coming up. So there we go. So we have peppers. We have struck peppers. I'm going to make sure these are good and dry. Uh, and I got to grab a little bit of soft black. I like soft black for shading reds. It's one of my favorites. It is such a pretty color. Liz Minardo, you said you're having trouble accessing the rerun. Uh, oh, if you go to my YouTube channel and click on live at the top menu, it'll take you to the videos in there. So soft black is our shading color for the reds. And we're going to use plantation pine as the shading color for the greens. And we're going to keep a little bit of soft black or black green for to deepen any shading. And I'm using a half inch angle for this. And you're going to thin these colors. I very rarely use colors full strength. So I'm picking up a little bit of soft black and I'm going to blend it out really well because you don't want to use it full strength because it's too dark. And we're going to shade the back side of these peppers with a nice little float of that thinned soft black. Now the trick to this is to keep that whole chisel edge on the surface. Don't have it rocking up onto the tip. You've got to keep the whole chisel edge on the surface. Just 
just like that. If you rock your brush up onto the tip, you have a tendency to get a really narrow band of color and it doesn't float out. You don't get that nice gradient that we're looking for. But if you keep the whole chisel edge on the surface, it will help you distribute that color very nicely indeed. Too. There we go. So we have nice shading on each of those red peppers. And then we're going to use that plantation pine. Again, blended. It's rarely full strength. And I'm using the whole chisel edge of the brush to lay in that float. And I know exactly what you're thinking, that that plantation pine looks muddy over top of that bright holly green. And yes, it does, but there's a purpose behind it. We want to give this green an earthy feel. And so having that transparent green over top just subdues that bright green a little bit. And it just gives us a slightly darker value. And it keeps that nice earthy feel to the peppers. They're never that perfectly bright green anyway. So there we go. I'm going to deepen that. There we are. I like those earthy tones for this type of thing. We're not looking for, for high realism in this one. So I'm going to dry these real quick. And we're going to use orange flame. That's not orange flame, that's warm sunset. I've got some orange flame. Talk about an in-your-face orange. We're going to use that as our one of our highlight colors for our chili peppers. And we're going to put a float down the left side of our pepper with a float of that orange flame. And we're coming in from the edge by about a sixteenth of an inch. Just in from the edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to give us a nice little orangey tone. Orangey undertone to our peppers. And it's going to add a little bit of heat to those peppers too. So we're going to bring that lovely orange down like so. I love that little punch of heat that that orange flame gives to that red. <laughs> Sandy, I like to, I like grab, go ahead and grab your mop. If you want to soften your, your floats, go right ahead. I use a mop too from time to time. Nothing wrong with that. It's good technique. It helps soften out and eliminate some edges and halo. And it's a great way to fix, you know, perhaps a float that isn't as perfect as we would like. It, so there's nothing wrong with using a nice mop brush to soften that out. So if you are comfortable, by all means, go ahead. So we have 
nice orangey highlight on our peppers. And we're going to put a highlight on our green peppers. We're going to do that with a little bit of that matcha green. I love this green. Again, this color is very far from its base coat. If you've noticed, the two colors that I use, the shading color and the highlight color, are very far from this base coat. So we're going to use a little bit of that matcha green, which is a, a bit more opaque than, say, a margarita. And I'm going to grab my mop. Because I can. Nothing wrong with using a mop brush. I just want to soften that a little bit. That works. Not quite enough liquid in there. There we go. Little highlight. Again, not perfect. Who's going to know? Honestly. And keep in mind, this is just the first step for this highlight. See, I got these nifty little stop and start marks in there. I'm going to soften my highlight. So now we have highlight in place. And essentially, this one is just for placement. But it shows us where the light impact is going to be, which is just to the right of that line. So now we get to work with a dry brush and I'm going to show you my favorite. My favorite is this one. This is a Mezzaluna. This is a medium. I like this one because it's a combination of natural hair and a synthetic. So it's a blend of two different types of, of filament, which work really well for this particular thing. We're going to work with a little bit of that matcha green and a little touch of warm white. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of matcha green on my dry brush, and then I'm going to pick up just a tiny touch of warm white. And I'm going to stipple that on my palette like so, so that I get the two colors mixed well. Not that I want to drastically change it. And then I'm going to very lightly blot my brush on a piece of paper towel or on some shop towel. You want the brush to be almost dry. Now everyone has their own technique for, for doing dry brushes. Some people it's straight up and down. For me, it changes depending on the surface that I'm, I'm painting on. And so I want this one to kind of have a blush effect. So I'm laying the color on in a light circular fashion just to the right of that first highlight that we wrote put in just like that nice and soft i'm going to do that all the way across i'll just turn my brush over so i'm just using that line as my guide to place in my highlight and it's a very light one and it's going to come to about the halfway mark of that pepper. I'm going to come back and I'm going to reload my brush. A little bit of that green, a little bit of that white. And then blot, 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 blot. And it's a light touch. Very light. You don't have to scrub doesn't have you don't have to work hard to do this so we've got a nice light soft highlight and it's going to come about halfway across that pepper now we're going to repeat that to get our next value so we're going to pick up a little bit more white and add it to that green. And then again, 
I'm going to come to my surface. Now this one is going to be a little smaller than the first. And you're going to put it in the middle of that band that we just worked so hard to get. And it's nice and light and the circles are smaller. And then our final one is with that dirty brush, you're going to pick up a bit more warm white. So it's almost all white at this point, almost, or very, very light green. And blot your brush. And then you're going to put little highlights in just a few locations. Whoops, I have a little too much paint in my brush, so I'm going to blot. Still a little too much. Good heavens. There we go. That's a little better. Not quite so heavy handed. So now I have three values. Each one is a little bit brighter than the next. And then we're going to put a final light impact point on our peppers. And I like to keep them the brightest up towards the top. And they're going to go at the top of that little patch that you put in that brightest point like that. So we have nice bright green peppers. So I'm going to clean out my dry brush because we're going to change colors. And this is how I clean mine out. And one of the reasons that I do it this way is so that I can continue to work with the same brush. So I'm going to put a little bit of hand sanitizer on a piece of paper towel or shop towel. And I'm going to load up my dry brush and I'm going to start working out all of that green and white that was in there. And the reason I use a hand sanitizer for this point is because it will dry fast. It will evaporate very quickly and it helps remove all of the paint from my brush. There we go. So once I've cleaned it, I'm going to just brush it back and forth on some shop towel so no paint left in it. And the brush is well almost almost completely dry. So now we're going to come back to our red peppers and we're going to repeat that. This time we're going to be using that orange flame. and a little bit of warm white. We're going to make a slightly lighter value of the orange flame. And we're going to dry brush very softly with a little bit of that lighter value orange. And again, we're going to bring that about halfway across the pepper. And that first float that we did is our placement guide. So that's as far as we want to go when we go to the left. And we want to come about halfway across the pepper for this one. And so notice that the shading looks suddenly much darker. <laughs> 
So I'm going to pick up a little more orange and a little bit more white. Again, making a slightly lighter, <clears throat> pardon me, a slightly lighter orange. And we're going to come just to the, whoops, a little schmiggly. Going to come just to the right of that last highlight. And again, we're just going to pop that little highlight in. I love the texture this creates, that you get a slightly shiny look to your pepper. <laughs> oh my God, Liz Minardo, your stuffed peppers are to die for. Liz um, hosted me when I was in Hamilton area and one night for dinner, we had just the most delicious red wine and an absolutely fabulous stuffed red pepper. It was so good. So I'm going to then pick up a little more white. We're making that slightly brighter orange. And this is our light impact. Not the final one, but it is one of them. And that's what's going to give this pepper that lovely sheen. Look at that. So they don't have to be in a straight line. I kind of like that they're broken up in a little bit. Instead of having one bar that is broken a little. It just gives you the impression that there's some texture. That these are not perfectly smooth tubes or cylinders. That there's a little texture to them. And then we're going to put that same light impact point that we had on the green ones. We're going to do the same thing to the red ones. And it should be right in there. Like so. And we have fabulous red peppers, red and green peppers. Everybody's asking Liz if what time dinner is. She makes such great peppers. They're yummy. So our little peppers here are going to get some leaves. We're going to add some fabulous leaves. Of course, it's me, so they're antique green. You can use lush green if you want to. And this little cap of small leaves at the top of the peppers. It does finish these nicely. A little bit of antique green for these leaves. Going to give us some nice little peppers. Ooh, Vicky's having a smoked brisket tonight. Yummy. It's not warm enough to get the smoker out. <laughs> It's been years since I had rabbit stew. Good luck trying to get the rabbit out here. No, you can get it. You can get it at the grocery store. 
but it's just not a common thing anymore. People don't seem to eat rabbit as much as they used to. Although the price of beef goes up again, that might change. <laughs> I'm looking at this and I'm thinking we might be having chili tonight. <laughs> I don't know why peppers made me think of chili, but chili would be tasty tonight. It's cold enough for it. It's like 10 degrees outside. Oh, is it really? Wow, sure warmed up. Yesterday it was like minus 22. <laughs> wow. You. More rain. I suppose as long as it's not freezing, it's okay. Sussex area, poor sure got slammed. So the leaves on the tops of these peppers are really simple. They're just little teardrop shaped leaves with a nice little point. Um, and I'm only putting one coat of antique green on. I really don't think you need more than that. And we're going to Shader. We're going to shade those with a little bit of plantation pine. And they're super simple because we're going to paint these in the simplest manner possible. So the shading is just at the top of the leaf where it would join the stem. Little U-shaped float. Nothing over the top. Nothing complex. So we're just going to put that little U-shaped float at the top of each one of those little leaves. Like so. Super simple. I can't see. Idaho has been getting snow. <laughs> they do look like dancing peppers. <laughs> we used to have rabbit quite frequently when I was a kid. But it was an inexpensive meat. And, I mean, we could set snares in, you know, in the on the property and it was fine. We can't do that anymore. And my mother was a champ at skinning rabbit. She made it look as easy as taking off a t-shirt. <laughs> hmm. But in those days, nothing went to waste. So I've got little shadows on each one of those little leaves at the top. Facebook is sure buffering today. And then we're going to add a little highlight to the other end of each of those leaves with a little float of that matcha green. Just like that. And again, nothing fancy. Nothing too complex. Just a little color out at the tip of the leaf. Like so. Now the fun part of, of painting something like this is quite simply that it is very forgiving. It's a great opportunity to practice some really basic techniques and still end up with a really nice little piece 
to decorate with. Or if you have a friend who is, you know, this is the, one of their favorite themes is this chili peppers or anything to do with the kitchen. <laughs> Maze is peeking through the cat door on the studio. She's behaving like a cranky teenager today. So there we go. That little highlight out at the tips of each of those leaves. And we are almost finished with our peppers. I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we're going to use my favorite liner, which is my Tenot Extra Long Detail Liner. And we're going to thin a little bit of that matcha green with some either glaze or water, either or. And I'm going to add just a touch of warm white to it. Not that I want a really bright green, I just want to make it a little bit more opaque. That's all. And we're going to use that to do this. So we have all of these wonderful little vines on our lettering in here. So, just like that. And you might notice that I'm putting that little thin line on the highlight side. So, on that stem, that little stem coming off, that's where the highlight side is. So I'm going to just carefully outline all of those little leaves with a very fine line of that thinned margar uh, margarita, matcha green, and a little touch of warm white. And I like to add, make it sort of squiggly so that it's not absolutely perfect. Just sort of implies that the leaf has got a little ruffle in it. So those lines don't have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. If you want to, you can add a little curly cue at the end. It's those little irregularities that just add character to these kinds of things. There we go. How fun is that? It's nice and light. Don't get too heavy handed. Don't worry about whether or not they're perfect. It doesn't matter. Same with the curly cues. I just find these are far more interesting if they're less than perfect. They can all go the same direction or they can go in different directions. That's entirely up to you. And quite honestly, anybody that sees your painted piece is never going to know what it was supposed to look like or how it originally looked. It doesn't matter. truly does not. There we go. So we have leaves galore. We have little vines and tendrils and textures. And it works. So I'm going to dry this real quick. And we're going to add a couple of little shadows just to tweak things. 
I'm going to use my small angled shader for this. I'm going to use a little bit of asphaltum. Just a little. And we're going to come up underneath those leaves a little with a little bit of asphaltum. Just like that. All it does is just give those little leaves up there a little bit of elevation and produces a small shadow up there. It doesn't have to be much. It's just enough to create a little contrast between. So, very simple. And then I'm going to switch to my half inch angle. And again, I'm picking up some asphaltum and I'm thinning this a little bit because we're going to lift these peppers off the surface and we're going to do that with a full load of asphaltum underneath here. Again, it just creates a little bit of contrast and a little bit of depth in there and separates those peppers just a smidge from the background. It is a simple thing to do, but it does make a difference in the end. So now we have some peppers that are sort of floating above the surface just a little bit. That little bit of a shadow, and it is just a little. You don't need to make it too, too dark. If you're more comfortable using a little bit of black, you can use that. But I like the asphaltum because it's much easier to control it. It's not quite so dark. Whereas black is a hard color to control. So we have a little bit of elevation. I'm going to dry that real quick. And we're going to work on some lettering. So I'm going to give myself a clean palette. Right there. I'll get rid of some of the, the grunge and the stuff that I've accumulated here. We're going to have a little bit of fun with the lettering. We're going to use a number two rigger for the lettering. Have a very dirty brush here. There we go. I'll get some stuff out of the way so that we can focus on this. We're also going to talk about um, creating a flame look or a really hot look on this lettering. But to get started, I'm going to do the same thing to the lettering that I did to the peppers, and that's give them a good base because the color that I'm using for the lettering is a yellow and it will be highly affected by all of that black back there if I don't put something down first. So I've got a little bit of warm white, a number two rigor and a bunch of glaze. I want to thin out my color quite well. And we're going to start filling in all of this lettering. And this is where those straight vertical lines come into play. It is virtually impossible to create a straight line from a crooked one. So when you're painting lettering, if those lines are not straight, you will never get a straight one. But if you have a nice straight line to paint up to, it makes everything else so much simpler. So there we go. So one coat of warm white on this lettering
will give us a really nice base for this bright yellow that's going in. And I like the idea of painting right from the very beginning of a piece because it shows you that you can compete it, complete it within a fairly short amount of time. I do paint fast, I know that. But when you have all of the tools these wonderful little tools to work with. You can really paint quick when you need to. And this is an enjoyable piece to paint because it's not overly complex. But it has a lot of technique in it. There's a lot of different methods to use to get a nice finish in this. And the lettering is not the least of them. There we are. I'm having a little too much fun painting lettering. So I'm just checking to see if we have any questions. Is Rene okay? He's very quiet today. Well, he was actually upstairs um, doing a bunch of packaging for me. Packaging stencils. And so he is back down here, but he's, I think, monitoring me. YouTube channel. You awake? Yeah. Yeah. See, he's here. He's not all there, but he's here. We'll never be all there. No. Like fun in that. <laughs> he is quiet today. What you do in a few hours takes me four days longer. <laughs> Andrea George. You still using that number two reader? I am. Yeah. So we have peppers. Now we're going to do the hot. I think too, I can paint things quickly because I designed it. So I know where everything goes and how I want it to look and how it's supposed to look. So I'm not juggling a whole bunch of thinking. By the time I get to a live, I've already done this two or three times. So I already know where everything goes. I'm familiar with the technique. I'm familiar with everything. So for me, it's a fast paint. That's not the case for someone working from a pattern or working from a video. So, I mean, you got to give yourself some grace.
a whole different ball game when you're painting from a book or from a pattern or from a class than if you are painting it from a design that you created. It's a different ball game altogether. I know where the pitfalls are. I know where the foibles are. I'm familiar with every aspect of this. So for me, it's easy. For someone painting from a book or a pattern, a lot of the times the things that I simply take for granted, they may not know. So I try to put as much information in there as I feel is necessary, but sometimes it's not always enough. And nor should you beat yourself up when you don't know or it takes you four hours to paint something it took me two hours to do. The water pebbles. So I'm just going to finish the little line work that connects these various elements. There we are. I'm going to put the... I like the aspect of this that is the imperfections. The important things are straight. The important things are level. So I'm going to dry this real quick. I missed a spot. See what I mean? There we go. Double check. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that this is good and dry because we're going to put... We have three colors to go over top of this. One, two, three. Yeah, three more colors. Four more colors to go over top of this. Good heavens. So in this case, our base color, I used marigold for this, which is a nice rich yellow. It's an earthy yellow and it actually pairs really nicely with the greens and the reds that are in this. So I'm going to use my rigger and a little bit of glaze and we're going to base coat the lettering. Go over top of all that white with a little bit of marigold. And the trick to this is to make sure that all of those strokes all go in that one direction. And that you fill in all of that space. And that little bit of white that we put down makes a world of difference to how this lettering ends up. Because it allows that yellow to be a little bit more opaque. We're only doing one coat. This lettering is going to have a distressed appearance anyway. And it's so much simpler to just do the one coat. And we, as I said, we have three more colors to go over top of this. So we do not need to have that fully opaque base color. We just want it even even is more important than fully opaque. Watching me paint makes <laughs> Oh, Shannon. Oh my goodness. I mean, you're working too hard, dear. Somebody said that about Bob Ross one time. That they could fall asleep to the sound of his voice. And if you find my voice soothing, I'll take that as a compliment.
because you're relaxed. <laughs> I hope. I hope you're relaxed. Hi, Bobby. How are you? Bobby Campbell. <laughs> I love this this marigold yellow this is just such a rich yellow and it works exceptionally well on top of that warm white it's a nice base Gives us a nice finish in the end. And because we've got that coat of warm white down, we only need the one coat of the yellow. And the trick is just to make sure that you cover all of the white. Of course, we've got some white graphite going in there too, so i got to go in and clean up a few little things at the end, but... We always do. There we go. I'm glad to hear you're doing well, Bobby. It's the one thing that I do miss. I miss going to convention and seeing all my favorite teachers. So the technique we're going to use is a staggered float for this lettering. And essentially what that means is that we're going to layer floats one on top of the other and then we're going to stagger them slightly so that each float shows up. And what it creates is sort of a gradient effect. Hello, Charmaine. So, oh, goodness, I put my finger in it. I messed up a letter. <laughs> I think that's why I'm so looking forward to Tennessee. To the show in Chattanooga. I get to see a whole bunch of people I have not seen in four years. Crazy. It's been four years. So I'm looking forward to seeing, not only that, I'm looking forward to being in a classroom. <laughs> Probably will have forgotten how to teach in a classroom by now. Oh my goodness. I just lost the Facebook feed. I don't know. I don't know if you guys can still hear me or see me. Okay. No, I just lost the feed here. That's all. There we go. So we've got 
a little bit of marigold. A couple of things I want to just touch up a little here. I've got a spot here that there we go. Just want to make sure I got everything filled in the way I need it to be. There we go. good excellent for a second there i thought i lost the feed completely it was just me so we're going to do a staggered float and the first one means that we're going to have to walk a float out so we're going to use a little bit of orange flame and the second one will be with a little bit of that tomato red. There we go. And I'm using a 3 8 angled shader for this. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that orange flame. And I'm going to make sure it's well blended on my brush. Now I do that little flat bit at the bottom, just draw a line there, and then we're going to walk the float up the lettering like so to about the halfway mark. So about halfway up the letter. And that's with the orange flame. So each letter is going to get that treatment. So a little line of paint and then we're going to just gradually walk that color up. So it's a float and then you just sort of pull it so that it comes up the letter. It's going to come up to about the halfway mark. Just like so. So we have a nice bright orange float that com starts at the very base of the letter and it comes up to about the halfway mark. So we have a nice bright orange at the bottom. Now if you would prefer it go the other way, you can certainly do that. It won't hurt. I love this bright orange over top of that marigold. It's so pretty. So this is going to give that lettering a very hot, spicy look. But this is only the first of three colors. So there's our orange. And again, make sure it comes up to about the halfway mark on each letter. So it already looks pretty spicy. So I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we're going to do the same thing with that tomato red or red alert or any nice bright red. It doesn't have to be tomato red in particular. It can be any nice bright red. And then this next float at the bottom of the letter is that red and it's going to come up halfway up the orange like so 
So you have that nice rich red. And it comes halfway up the orange. And it gives that lettering that heat that we're looking for. Now you can let this dry and then you can repeat it. If it's not bright enough for you, you can let that red dry and then you can repeat it until you get the look you want. And in this case, I want a nice hot red and halfway up the orange. So we get that really hot and spicy reddish tone on our lettering. And you can deepen it. If you want it brighter, go right ahead. Make it brighter. And I'm going to do the same thing to the word hot. Again, halfway up the orange. Hot peppers. So we still have, that's two of three colors. We've got one more yellow to put in. We're going to start at the top of the letter and we're going to use saffron yellow, which to me is a really hot yellow and it's nice and transparent. So we're going to get that really nice bright yellow. And this is where we're going to highlight the top of that lettering and we're going to walk it down till it meets the orange. And it's that little overlap is important. Where those two colors merge is important. So that if you have a hard edge, this will help diffuse it. If it kind of just stops and it's not as soft as you would like, that little layer of yellow over top is going to help soften that so that you don't get that really harsh bar look. And that brighter yellow just adds a little more heat. And then you just walk that saffron till it overlaps with the orange. Look at that. Hot peppers. Make sure everything is dry, really well and dry. Sure, you want to pop some neons in there? Go right ahead. It will look great. I've got a little bit of neon yellow right here. If you want to see what it's going to punch that up a little bit, let's put a little neon yellow in. I'm always open to suggestions. I love neon yellow and I love the neons in general. I just think they're a lot of fun. Uh, Robin's asking if you can repeat the colors you use for the, the, the lettering. Yep, absolutely. Your base color is warm white. Put a, a layer of that in so that you've got a nice barricade between the black and the yellow. The yellow that I used is base coated with marigold. The shading color from the bottom up to the halfway mark is orange flame. And then the shading color from the bottom to halfway up the orange is either tomato red or any bright red. And then the highlight color that I use up top is a little bit of saffron yellow. And right now I'm just putting in a little punch 
of neon yellow just to show you what it'll do. So it gives it a nice little zing, a little bit of heat. I do kind of like that. I'm all for putting a little heat in our hot peppers. Mm -mm -mm. I like it. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to, you could took, uh, put a little bit of that uh, neon red or neon green into your highlights on your peppers if you wanted to. Just to add a little punch to it. A little more heat. I love that yellow. Adds lots of zing to that lettering. So we're going to dry this really well. Much. That's a great name. Uh, Hi everyone, just wanted to say I started painting again. Oh, good for you. And she loves this. <laughs> Her name is Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Welcome. Um, I'm using a Factus Black or a Tombow Black Eraser. Uh, and I use them for a reason. One, on, I use a lot of black and dark backgrounds. And I don't like that some erasers polish the background. You end up with shiny spots, um, or worse, it wears right through your paint. And I find that I don't have that issue when I use this Factus Black Eraser. I don't get any shiny spots, it doesn't damage my paint. It doesn't wear through anything. I just end up with a really nice finish. So we have hot peppers and I've removed my graphite lines, which is always a bone of contention for me. <laughs> Don't like graphite lines. And it cleans up the edges of those letters really nicely. Look at that. Very pretty. So we're going to grab my favorite fugly brush. And we're going to spatter this a little bit. And we're going to spatter it with a little bit of lamp black or asphaltum, either one will work. I'm gonna use some lamp black. Come on. And a little bit of warm white. And I'm just going to thin out my paint with a little bit of water or a little bit of glaze. And I'm going to spatter my surface quite generously because I like that sort of distressed look for this piece. So we got a little bit of warm white on there. And then I'm going to repeat that with a little bit of thinned lamp black. And again, I'm going to do it a little on the generous side because I can and I can do whatever I like because it's my piece. Just like you can. If you don't like a lot of spatter, then do what you like. Uh, Kathy is wondering what size the surface is. The surface is an eight by 10 postage plaque. We have them on the website. Oh. Nice little eight by 10. <laughs> so I'm going to dry this real quick. I like the distressed look. It looks kind of vintagey. And then I'm going to grab one of my favorite toys. I'm going to grab my deco color gold paint pen 
and I'm going to use a steel edged ruler. The reason I do is because they have a cork backing so they don't sit right on the surface. The edge of this thing doesn't sit right on the surface and I'm going to line it up and we're going to put a gold border around the stencil detail in the center of the panel. And I'm using the skinny edge of this pen to put that in. Because I don't want a thick border, I want a thin one. Now, you can do this in any color you want, quite honestly, but I'm, I'm kind of partial to the gold one. And I'm going to line that up with my edge. And again, I'm using the chisel, the skinny edge of it. And I'm going to stop where the pepper overlaps the surface, overlaps that edge a little bit. That's where I'm going to stop. Because I kind of want that tucked in behind. And I'm to finish that. I'm going to wipe the edge because it's me and I will smear it. <laughs> now that using the masking tape trick to put a border on is just always been one of the easiest ways to put a border around something without having to fight with measuring or anything like that. It gives you an almost perfect one inch border all the way around. The all I will say is just take your time when you're putting your tape on so that you get it on nice and straight. That's all. And there we go. So we have a nice little gold border all the way around. Easy peasy. Finishes off this surface really nicely. Now you could um, paint the edges with gold if you wanted to. They're, they're super easy to do, especially if you have one of these gold paint pens. Uh, the one that I use the most often is this one. I have it in two sizes. This is the fine and then I have the regular. And these are the deco color paint pens. These ones are from Ushida and you can get them online uh, on Amazon. They also carry them in a variety of paper crafting websites as well. So they're fairly easy to find and they're a little less expensive than the more traditional uh, Krylon pens. And my favorite because they work well. And yes, we need the wheel. And I need to switch it to what? Face cam? No, you're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there we go. Hot peppers. It's a fun one. It just covers some really basic techniques. Um, dry brushing, floating, shading, highlighting. Um, I think every once in a while we kind of have to step back from some really complex design pieces and just play with some really simple designs. And this peppers, you can't go wrong. I mean, who doesn't like peppers? So today's giveaways are from Dynasty Brush, the Stencil Studio, and from Tombow USA. So there's some really nice um, goodies in this little package. Of course, there's always some fun stuff from us too. And uh, in order to get your name on that wheel, all you ever have to do is join the chat, whether you're on Facebook or on the YouTube channel. Um, ask a question, say hi, hit all the buttons, the like button, the join button, or the subscribe button, or the follow button. You can hit any one of those and you get your name on the wheel so that you get a chance to win one of the three giveaways that we have every week. So Renee is setting up the wheel. I can't see it. It's spinning. It's spinning. Suzanne Hope. Right on. So, Suzanne, um, make sure that you head over to the website at tracymoreau.net. 
and click on the little speech bubble in the lower right hand corner or on the contact us button in the top menu and send us an email with your shipping information so that we can get your goodies out to you as soon as possible. Nazavan? Kathy McAllister. Hey, right on, Kathy McAllister. Kathy is a member of uh, my um, paid membership group. So it's nice that, that some of the members win every once in a while. Boy's Facebook is really lagging. <laughs> yeah. It's awful. Darlene Greenwood. Awesome, Darlene. So as I said, ladies, head over to the website, click on the little speech bubble in the lower right hand corner, send us your shipping information so that we can get your goodies out to you as soon as possible. Currently, the shipping situation seems to be resolving itself quite nicely. Uh, orders are going out on a regular basis. They're, they're not sitting for, for too long anymore. And um, Canada Post seems to be moving things along quite smoothly at the moment. So fingers crossed. But uh, it, it takes anywhere from 7 to 21 business days for anything to get shipped these days. So bear with us if it hasn't shown up in a couple of weeks. It'll be there shortly. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's live. I had fun with this piece. As I said, it was really nice to get back to some really simple and basic techniques and then play with a relatively simple design. And I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that you learned something today. And uh, thanks again for joining us as you always do. We greatly appreciate it. So join us again next Saturday. We've got a fun little project coming up for you. I, I'm just waiting for my surface to arrive. should be here Monday. So uh, I have the design all done. All I got to do is get it onto the new surface and uh, we'll be painting something springy next Saturday. So join us uh, at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time right here on uh, my YouTube channel or on Facebook, either one on Tracy Morrow Live. And uh, join in on the fun. We always have some fun giveaways and we definitely always have a few laughs. So everybody have a fabulous weekend. <coughs> Mwah. We love you. Stay safe. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to live? Yeah. Pet your dog. <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> have a great weekend, everyone.